it generates about 5 million data points a second. That's a huge amount of data that we need to pull off this aircraft. I'm Vic Terry, Director of Digital Innovation here at Vertical Aerospace. So my teams look after a lot of the digital incentives and uh, applying modern technologies to what we do here at Vertical. So that's things from designing the aircraft, but also around the business and how we use some of these modern technologies. So if we look back to traditional flight test, you'd probably be waiting about a week to find out what had happened during that flight test, get the data back so you can start analyzing it and decide what you need to do for the next flight test. That is just too long a gap for vertical aerospace. We need to close that gap right down so that we can keep moving as fast as possible. So we've invested in all these data pipelines that pull 35,000 parameters off this aircraft. It generates about 5 million data points a second. It's a huge amount of data that we need to pull off this aircraft. We've got about 20 engineering teams that all contribute into making the aircraft. We need to serve that data out to them as fast as possible. We've got a stat that we use internally, it's called time to graph. So how long can I go from a flight test completing to I can get the graph in the hands of an engineer to make a decision. And we've managed to get that down to about 15 minutes. And that's not just here in the UK with our own engineers, that's globally available and also to some of our selected partners as well that we're working with. How is vertical aerospace changing the landscape? Why is vertical aerospace changing the landscape? If we take a look at this aircraft, it is vastly more complex than a lot of aircraft out there. It's more like a fighter jet under the hood. Now, we're not going to be able to beat Airbus, Boeing, etc. at their own game. You know, they're really good at it. They've been doing it for years. So we need to approach this differently. If we're going to get to certification in the time frames that we need, we need a complete step change approach. And we can do that because we're not burdened by a lot of this legacy. So we're taking all the modern tools and technology that's developed out in all sorts of industries and bringing them to bear here in the aerospace environment. Now, we need to temper some of that with safety standards, but actually with the amount of data we can process, the amount of knowledge and insights that we can gather in such a timely manner using these tools, I argue we can actually raise the bar on safety. Our current success, I think, is straddling the two different extremes of the mindset of, yes, we could be a full-on tech company and just say, yeah, go headlong into the tech, take the Silicon Valley approach of design and iterate and, it, and we'll get there in the end. The other extreme is the classical aerospace of we do the full V cycle, we put our requirements up front, we follow the same template and pattern, and then 10 years later, we might have an aircraft come out of it. We're trying to take the best of both because both have got their pros and cons. Ultimately, we need to get an aircraft that hits our 10 to the minus nine safety standard. That safety standard that we all enjoy today when we get on an aircraft and go on our holidays or our business trip or whatever. Much like an aircraft is made up of lots of components, our business needs to be made up of lots of different components that all come together to make a whole. Everything from the engineers doing the design work, sending it out to our global supply chain, getting those parts delivered on dock, on time, the project management around trying to get all that together, the talented build teams that we have that need to put all this aircraft together to sign it off that it's airworthy. Not just that we can put it up in the sky, but we can fly it with a human life on board. There's a phenomenal amount of testing that we need to do across all our sites. We've got the battery center that's doing all the battery testing. We've got Canwell Court, which is doing a lot of the digital integration testing. We've got the E2 hangar, which does a lot of the high energy testing, be it high voltage stuff, be it moving propellers, actuation, all of that. And then it all culminates at Kemble Airfield, where Cy Davies gets into that aircraft and takes her off into the sky. So where we'll be in 12 months time, we'll have proven our technology, we'll have flown transition with a pilot on board. I'm personally really excited to achieve that milestone. And then we'll be headlong into working hand in hand with the regulators to bring this product to market.